Okay, uh, Marv, can you play Ryan Tannehill's comments? This is a portion of his yeah. comments. Okay. We're competing yeah, against no. each other. We're uh, you know watching the same tape. We're, we're doing the same drills. I don't think it's my job to mentor him, but you know if he learns learns from me along the way, then then that's a great thing. Okay, you've been a starter. You were a backup. Sure. The, the role that you sure. play as a starter, the role that you hope to play as a backup. So I think your answer yesterday, Dan, and I, that's, that's what prompted this whole thing, not my heritage uh, in coming on the show. It's um, the way you answer the question, I don't think anybody's answered it that well. Because if you actually say yes or no to the question, it's a total loaded question, right? You're screwed either way. And if you say, yes, it's my job to mentor him, and I'm happy to do it, whether it's true or not, you just sound like a complete pushover and a total wuss. And, like, you know, the fans are like, oh, okay, well, he's ready to pass the baton. That's great. What a nice guy. And your teammates are kind of like, what? Like, what's that all about? What happened to the dog that was with us, like, Mm -hmm. In this battle, like, where's our guy? You know, maybe he lost his stinger. Maybe he doesn't care anymore. You know, it just leaves a lot of room for doubt and leaves you open. Now, if you say no, then you're just a complete asshole. Like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe he wouldn't do that. What a villain. You know, what a jerk. And it's really, you know, it's, it's really not your job. But the way you answered it yesterday when you said, listen, if he can learn from me, that means I'm doing something right. That means I'm helping the team. That means we're getting first downs. We're, we're you know, I'm, I'm orchestrating scoring drives. And if he gleans a little bit off of me in my study habits that help me play well on the field, then that's great. But you don't really – the problem is the reporters and, and people are savvy enough to ask this question because it's a total setup. And guys, you know, they get caught off guard. They shouldn't now you know, as publicized as this one is, from here on out, like, you don't have to answer the question. You don't have to say yes or no. Take it wherever you want to go, but don't say yes or no because it just – it it brings along so much negativity with it, and it's really too bad for those guys. But when you're the backup, you know, you're – you're fighting like hell to get on the field, and that's the thing. Like, there's only one guy who plays. There's only one quarterback on the field. And it's different. You got five other wideouts that are rotating in and out. You got multiple defensive ends. You got multiple defensive linemen and offensive linemen that kind of shuffle in and out. It's just different. It's the nature of the position is different. And so when you draft a guy that's potentially going to take your spot, that makes life a little uneasy. I mean, I was there in New York with, you know, with Geno Smith. We went through that. Um, you know, I'm behind Nick Foles after he has this amazing season in Philly. Like I've been on both sides of it and it's, it's, uh, it's definitely uncomfortable. Um, I got to say that every time I was professional, um, you know, I, I did my best to be cool. I'm not going to like sabotage the guy, but I'm not going to go out of my way to like help him. Uh, or, you know, unless it's, unless you don't feel threatened, I guess. Right. Yeah. If there's no threat, like what is Aaron Rodgers worried about with, you know, the guy behind him he, with Jordan Love, you know, he's giving him tips. and Hey, here's how I throw this ball and blah, blah, blah. Move your feet like this. When you throw the quick little bubble screen, it'll get your hips open and give you an easy lane to throw it or whatever. But a lot of those things you just start to learn by watching the other guy. Yeah. And I think that you, if you do your job as the starter, the backup can, then watch you do it. But also he can ask you questions. I don't think Ryan Tannehill, you know, at the end of a game is going to go, uh, hey, Malik, come on over here. Let me tell you all the great things that I did. He doesn't have time. <laughs> exactly. Right? He doesn't have time to do that. Other quarterbacks and, and really even other uh, sports, do we say, oh, you're going to mentor that guy? It's only that position. That, that, exactly. that sport. It's, exactly. you got to mentor this guy. And I agree with you. If Ryan Tannehill didn't put himself in this position, then they'd probably be talking about a contract extension, and they wouldn't be drafting 100%. Malik Willis, right? 100%. Although he did fall kind of in their lap. But all these things had to happen to get to here, right? He had to throw three interceptions in that, you know, divisional game, and they were ranked number one and, or the top seed or whatever. Yeah. You know, so all those things had to happen for them to even be sniffing around. And maybe they would have drafted this kid anyway because he fell so far. 
but still it wouldn't feel like such a threat without that game last year. And then you put him in this position. And as long as, listen, as long as you're professional, because they say, is it your job to mentor, right? You got to go back to the question. What's the actual question? Is it your job to mentor him? Well, no, the answer is flat out. No, the answer is, you know, my job is to win football games. Okay, now break that down. Well, we got to complete passes. I got to get us into the right play. I got to get us out of negative plays. And we got to kick the ball after every series, either a punt, an extra point, or a field goal. And if we're doing that and I'm taking care of the football and throwing touchdowns and stuff, yeah, that's my job to move the team down the field, the offensive team down the field and score points and beat the other team. That's my job. 